While I was working on the last video about perspective, I posted in the community and offered to answer any questions you might have. There were questions about perspective, composition, and value contrast. Frank said, I feel like getting the rough drawing, relative proportions, angles, negative spaces, and the ability to convey any objects, weight, and form are the most important topics, questions for me. Second to that would be composition layout, how to convincingly get two, three, or more objects into a drawing. I remember the first time the proportions fell into place for me. I, I was in my 20s. It, it was exhilarating to realize after all this time that, and I've been dry, drawing my whole life, <laughs> but one day the proportions are going to be there. Just keep practicing. And once the proportions are there, if the proportions are accurate, the angles, the negative space, now, as far as conveying an object's weight and form, that will come into the video Observing Shadows. That's a video that I'm working on. It's coming up, and I'll go into that with more detail. The ability to convey any object's weight and form is what we all hope to achieve. But it can be putting the cart before the horse. What I mean is, this is usually achieved through different shading effects. But for beginners, this is only satisfying and believable when it's applied to a solid foundation of carefully observed angles, proportions, and negative spaces. No matter how beautifully your shading and cross-hatching is, if the underlying proportions are off, it will feel wonky. The old saying about putting lipstick on a pig comes to mind. So my recommendation is to watch my other videos on observing edges, negative spaces, and angles and proportions, and keep practicing drawing consistently. You'll develop the strong foundation you need for the next steps that will help you convey any object's weight and form through different shading techniques. The second part of your question, Frank, about composition and layout, how to convincingly get two, three, or more objects into a drawing. The same goes for composition. Again, if the foundation proportions are off, no amount of careful composition and layout will make your drawing satisfying. When you're a beginning artist, just practice drawing the things around you from real life or from photos. I'll be devoting a specific video about composition in the future. But here, I'll mention briefly the composition rule most artists use. It's the rule of thirds. If you divide your paper into thirds, horizontally and vertically, and place objects where those lines converge, you'll be quite pleased with how balanced your pictures can be. Frank, you know, thank you so much. I'm glad you've been watching the videos. I hope they're helping. And be patient. <laughs> I'm a professional illustrator trying to do work with clients, and I spend as much time on these videos as I can. Before I share the next comment, please take a moment and click the like button. It helps let YouTube know you find my videos helpful, and they'll recommend them to other artists. Another comment is from Mark Donovan. The subject of value contrast is one of my biggest challenges in watercolor painting. So I've tried practicing it with pencil sketches first, a kind of 
thumbnail sketch. This doesn't require a lot of detail, but there needs to be clear information in the thumbnail sketch to show dark, mid, and light value shapes in the scene to be painted. Perfect. You've got the right idea, Mark. One of the videos I'm working on is about this perception of shadow. Before you dive into those challenges of watercolor, working it out in a thumbnail, a little value study. Most artists, that's the approach they take. James Gurney, you'll see him use this process quite a bit if you watch some of his videos. Uh, and you're right, you're looking for the big shadow shapes. One of the best things that you can do is take a photo that you want to draw to practice with and put it on a light table or a piece of tracing paper over it so that all of a sudden most of the value disappears. And just trace around the shape of the shadows. And you'll notice that some of those shadow shapes blend into each other. It's a good practice to break things down into the largest shadow shapes. If you can see those, and express those clearly, you're well on the way to communicate the picture that you want. The objects, the weight, the form comes from that shadow. my own drawings as I'm trying to build up the tone. I've got the white of the paper. This is the lightest area. I block in those shadows and then I pick a mid-tone and just try to define those mid-tones and the areas between them. You just kind of gradually keep working them but until you can clearly see that shadow shape it's hard to define the other shapes. So it's the perfect place to start. Thumbnails will be the quickest way. Thanks for your comment, Mark. And be patient while I work on the shadow video. Just keep practicing every day. Well, Mensa's question is, uh, perspective is quite difficult when I'd like to have a home and a barn and a shed in my composition. Feel free to address with wild abandon. Well, <laughs> this has been rattling around in my head quite a bit because perspective is the video that I just finished. The purpose of that perspective video is an overview of perspective to give you a sense of the different types of perspective and how your drawings can look like perspective drawings without you having to use the vanishing points and all the technical tools. But its focus is drawing from observation and that's an entirely different animal than what we're talking about here. You are looking for perspective from your imagination. How do you start drawing from imagination? Start with your horizon line and start with a line. And here's a vertical line. And if you put a vanishing point here, put one here and connect the top of this line to the vanishing points. And so this is the corner of an object that's closest to you and just pick some place and draw another vertical line here on the right and another one on the left. And what you've got is something that, that looks like a building. You want to be practicing boxes. How do you draw boxes from imagination from any angle? But what this is, is a, this looks more like a building. And that's because it goes above the horizon line. If you're outside and you look at a building, buildings are taller than we are. So those lines that are above us are going to slope down to their vanishing points. That's what makes it big. Now, higher on your paper, draw a horizon line and draw two vanishing points again. And this time, draw a vertical line that's below and then connect the top and bottom of these to those vanishing points. And then again, pick a vertical line for the back edge of the box, right and left. So you've got these edges but now from the back, from those new vertical lines you just drew, sketch in more vanishing points. 
And now you've got the shape of a box. And it looks like a box because you're looking down on it. If you look around, you'll notice any boxes that are around you, they look like a box because you can see the top of it. But practice drawing these boxes from different angles, different heights, and different positions. Draw some that are closer to one vanishing point than the other. The more you can practice these quick, loose sketches of perspective, these are the building blocks of what you're looking for. You're looking for a home, a barn, a shed in a composition. And you have to get some idea of how can I place these boxes loosely in a composition. Wow. <laughs> Easier said than done. You know, you know what? Well, there is enough information here for a complete video on its own. So I need to give it the depth that it deserves. As a professional illustrator, this is something I use very often in my work. And I'll show you how I solve this problem. Um, thank you for your questions. And I'm off to work on more videos. Thanks again, and thanks so much for watching.